So I'm, uh, without further ado, I'm going to bring up Kyle Smith. Uh, Kyle is an attorney, I, I mentioned earlier, who took on uh, DuPont Pioneer uh, defending the residents of Waimea Valley on Kauai. And, you know, um, where I live, you know, I'm not going to be here on Sunday, I'm going to be on Kauai, you know, but where I live, we have four of the largest chemical companies in the entire world operating in our community. Four of the largest chemical companies in the world, daily, uh, spraying pesticides, growing test crops, you know, just in, in the West Side community, particularly it's surrounded by these crops. And this one community called out for help. They called out to Pioneer, to Pont Pioneer, something like 10 years ago, and said, you know, we're tired of you guys, your actions are impacting our community, and DuPont Pioneer uh, did not step forward like the good neighbors they professed to be. And so this community did what, uh, what you're forced to do. They wouldn't talk to an attorney, a law firm. And when I first got involved in this issue about two years ago when I got back on the council, going around, people were concerned. People were concerned about their health. And I knew there was something going on, but when I heard a community in Waimea Town suing the major employer, I knew that there was something serious going on. This wasn't in Princeville, this is Waimea, this is a local community, plantation town, and they'd had enough. So they reached out to Kyle Smith, took on the biggest company, one of the biggest chemical companies in the world, and he won. Let's give it up for Kyle, please. Thank you. Everybody hear me? Yeah. Is that a little better? Yeah. Closer? Oh, there we go. Wait, oh, really yeah. close. Okay. Um, I'd like to say a couple of different things, I guess. And first, for people that don't know about the lawsuit, I want to explain a little bit about that because it's an important story and it's important for all of the islands and it's an example of how what we're doing tonight, why it can work and how it can work and what, what it need, where it needs to go. But before I get to that, let me also talk a little bit about, about this group, which is a really new group, and why it's so important. I didn't know about the fish pond cleanup, right? How would I know? And, and I live here. I didn't know about several other things I've heard tonight. I don't know a lot of people in this room, and most people in this room don't know other people in the room, right? We need a big tent to hold it. And what I mean by that is we've got to have a tent large enough that we have different groups come together, that we've got environmental groups, which are really close to my heart, that we've got cultural groups, which are obviously so important for traditions. Uncle Walter I met several years back when we started working out in Waimea, and he was a key part of that too, on coming out and giving people inspiration in Waimea, that it doesn't take, it doesn't take millions of dollars to make a change. It takes a guy on a surfboard who paddles out and says, this isn't going to happen anymore. Mm -hmm. And we've got a lot more than a guy on a surfboard in this room. We've got a whole hell of a lot more than that. But we don't know, we don't have that connection. And that's the genius, really, what Gary and the rest of people were working with Papa are doing. And so I just, I didn't get a chance to say it last week. I want to tell you personally, thank you, because this is so important for what we do, me personally, but more importantly, it's important for what everybody else in this room is doing, and it's really, really needed. And I hope everyone that isn't familiar with this group, I hope you start coming to the meetings and so that we can have a great time together, and we can learn about what all these other little groups are doing. And I'll tell you another thing, too, is that a couple of years back, when I first started, you might have guessed, I'm not from here originally, right? <laughs> so um, I moved my family out to work in White Man. Uh, I flew out, I had some experience on big cases, and I flew out, I met with people in Waimea, and I sat down with a group a lot like this, just about the same amount of people in a school cafeteria, actually, I think, and I said, well, everybody's upset, you've been complaining, I understand, that's great, everyone's upset, yeah, yeah, chemical companies, poisoning people, so what? I think Jerry might have, you might have been there in that very first meeting, and what, what I told people there was that, Bad stuff happens every single day, and you can't do a dang thing about it. Why am I not? Bad stuff happens every single day, until and unless you get a group together that works together. 
And this is more important here on, in the Hawaiian Islands, I found, than, than anywhere else, because the reality is, if you don't have groups working together, you're going to get splintered. And I tried to work in my man. Tried to say, hey, this GMO issue, or this chemical issue, or how we're dealing with farmlands, this is just a bunch of North Shore, beret wearing pallies, right? This is just a bunch of North Shore, you know, they don't know what they're talking about. Or this is, you know, it goes the other way too, where it's, you don't know what you're talking about because you don't have experience and because of where you grew up in Waimanala or whatever, that you don't have that kind of background. You don't have, you don't have a PhD or you don't have this, you don't have that. That argument works both ways against every group in this community, every group in this room. And the beautiful thing about Waimea and why it's such a great model is that our trial I had 86-year-old Japanese aunties who grew up in Jap Camp in Waimea. Father's father was a fisherman who drives her little red jeep, who makes her own fishing lures, who lived through sugarcane and took the stand, flew over from Kauai, and took the stand and said, this is unlike anything that I ever experienced growing up. Now imagine that. It's worse than what sugarcane was at the worst days of sugarcane. That's how bad it is, right? Because you had that herd speaking. I had native Hawaiians who were willing to come and explain why this was not part of their cultural value, values either. That's what it takes, particularly to win here on any issue. And one, again, just going back to why this group is so important, why this group is so, I'm sorry guys, someone just yell at me if, I, if you can't hear me. Why this group is so important is that I happen to be a lawyer. Being a lawyer is a lot like being a hammer. You know, every problem you see is a, is a nail, right? But we're not the right solution for a lot of different issues, right? So you gotta have other tools in the arsenal. I was thankful and really blessed that I got to work with so many people on YMA and that fight goes on. I also recognize though that what I do is not the right tool for everyone or every problem. There's a lot of other kinds of tools in this room that are so important. And whether it's cultural issues on any island, whether it's environmental issues, whether it's educational, whether it's any progressive issue, it takes all those different tools. And, and the beauty of this group, hopefully, is it helps pick the right tools and the right teams to fix some things now. And why it's so nice for Uncle Walter to say, hey, we're not gonna just wave signs, we're gonna go try to fix things, even little things. And, and the thing I emphasize at the last time in Waimea through all these meetings, but also just last week, is that what really changed things in Waimea is that every single meeting, we had exactly this. We had the whole community come together. We'd hang out, have a meeting, we'd talk and explain how it's going. And things didn't go, we didn't win everything. We took some lumps in this trial. We took some lumps uh, through the five years and longer that we've been working on it. And we did it together. And we explained and everyone came down and then we'd go sit down and eat and in everyone's homes. It's such an important collective action that needs to start tonight. And it needs to be at the next meeting where you invite your family or your friends to come and sit and listen about how do we all work on different issues. So that's my, that's my plug, I guess, for, uh, for Hapa a little bit. Let me tell you just a little bit about Waimea. As Gary mentioned, if you haven't been to Waimea, it's an incredible town, but it's in the middle of the southwest coast of Kauai. And six years ago or so, five and a half years ago, when I first drove out there, flew in, was called in, and I drove out the southwest coast, it was thousands of acres, and it looked like it had just been plowed that day. Literally, as far as you can see on the highway going into Waimea and past, it was red dirt openly plowed and left open. And I personally saw with my own eyes dust storms, tornadoes that were hundreds of feet high. And it was picking up that soil and just blowing out into the ocean. It was incredible. It's unlike, it was like out of the, the videos you see on YouTube of the Dust Bowl in Kansas and the Midwest. That's how bad it was for people who come from that, from that part of the country. And this little community had had people complaining to DuPont Pioneer for more than a decade. And this company had simply ignored them, had openly, had walked in and said, you know, we're sorry, 
a lot of lip service, but had done nothing to fix it and just left these fields open. And day after day, you can imagine why May has downwind, what that does, when literally you wake up in the morning, you get in your sheets, and as you put, pick the sheets off of you, you see the cloud of dust. When you put your kids home and put them into bed, and you have to shake off, they literally take the plastic off the beds or take the sheet off the bed, and it's covered in dust. When you pull out, literally, these homes, every single plate and utensil in some cases are kept in plastic boxes to keep the dust off. It's incredible. I'm not even talking about the pesticides. People don't understand how many different types and how strong and how much and how frequent the pesticide use was going on on these fields. And to some extent goes on today. I will say it's gotten a lot better since they got sued. And it's amazing how that works, right? When someone's actually looking and starts pointing a finger, it does get better. But if you look at the pesticide use, that historic pesticide use of using pesticides almost 250, 260, 270 days a year, plowing almost every day of the year. Literally, video and seeing pesticide drift into the community of all different kinds of pesticides, cocktails that have never been studied of how that works at different kinds of levels. Imagine what you would think sitting in that community for years experiencing that and how this community felt. So, they tried to complain and they tried to complain and finally they called us in and we filed a lawsuit and to make a very long story much shorter, we took it to trial earlier this year and it was a, a five week trial in federal court here on Oahu, that's uh, DuPont Pioneer didn't want to be in state court on Kauai, didn't want to have a Kauai jury, brings us to federal court on Oahu and we had a five week trial and a unanimous jury verdict in something like 12 hours and it was just for the first um, the first 10 homes. And so there's many, many more homes still to go. I want to recognize, I'm looking at him right now, one of the people who was one of our really key witnesses, and it's Dr. Hector Valenzuela. Hey. You should raise your hand, Hector, and stand up, because I'll tell you this much, you weren't at the, the last meeting, but there is... Yeah, <laughs> Again, I mean, lawyers are, I mean, we could call all kinds of things, right? Um, we can get up and argue and tap dance and all that kind of stuff and do our best, and we can think very strongly about things are wrong, and I do think this is very wrong, but I can't win at trial unless I have people I represent who are, I believe in, and the jury believes in, and we have people like Dr. Valenzuela who willingly gave up so much time to help that community and got up and testified and explained why, why this was not right for Hawaii, why this was not, geez, why this was not right for agriculture on Hawaii. And we would not have, we would not have won without you. First time I've actually got a chance to tell you that. I mean, it, it, one of the absolute most important things, and everybody in Waimea and everyone in this room and everyone in Hawaii I think owes you and should, I hope thanks you and realize the poor contribution you made. So we have at this point we have a unanimous jury verdict and it said a couple different things and it said that this company DuPont Pioneer um, that the public benefit what they claim to be the public benefit that they pay a lot of money into the community they have jobs they create jobs they spend a lot of money in the islands, right? What the jury said is that public benefit, tens of millions of dollars, Pioneer claimed, DuPont Pioneer claimed, does not outweigh the harm to that community. The harm to those 10 homes, just those 10 homes. Think about that for a second. A jury made up of people who live here made a decision in a federal court in Anasay and said, these millions of dollars on one end of the scale do not justify what you are doing to our land and what you're doing to our people and what you're doing to this community that has one of the coolest histories in all of Hawaii. It's where Captain Cook uh, first set foot. And I made that point. I said it's, you know, it's somewhat uh, 
interesting to me that this is where Captain Cook sits down in, I think it was 1774, 1778. 78. And then that sets off this chain of Western influence. And then, in, to put it mildly, and then later on, you now have this company, DuPont Pioneer, that literally is, in a lot of ways, a legacy of that first landfall. It's pretty heavy stuff that that happened in Waimea, right? So that's why it's such an important thing in my mind, aside from the fact that the jury just ruled in our favor, or these other things that are going on. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, big, it's a big victory, and um, it's still kind of sinking in. And, and what it's a victory that would not have been possible without a lot of people in this room. And um, that's what this night and that's what this group is about. And I, I talked to, to Walter right before this, but one of the things I want to understand better is understand these other issues better and hope that we have a lot of other meetings like this where we can come together and say, hey, this is an important issue for the, this group, and here's why. And here's how you can help out. And this is an important issue for that group. And it puts us all in, into contact with each other. So thank you very much. If you guys have any questions, otherwise, I appreciate it very much. Yes? Pardon me? I guess you could call it a downwinders case, because they're, on the, because they're uh, on the downwind side of the trade winds. So yeah, for sure, the trade winds blow across those fields and hit white man. But the important thing to remember is that, you know, we have Kona winds too, right? Pesticide drift, and, and importantly on this trial, it was just the drift of the dust, okay? That might have been in the papers, you may or may not have seen that. The jury didn't consider what harm the pesticides might be having. Pesticides drift the other way too, and the wind blows them the other way. And in fact, when the wind is not blowing, is some of the worst time because that's when it really sits and expands out and hovers at a higher concentration in a given area. So it doesn't go as far, but the concentrations are worse. So that's one of these issues why the school buffer zones, when you're talking about just moving the stuff back a few hundred feet, it seems to make perfect sense. That's why that's important. Yes, sir. Uh, these corporations have appealed uh, voter referendums and ordinances. What is the status? Are, are they going to pay up, or is, are they appealing, or what is the status of uh, the case? Sure. So there will be an appeal. You know, the, um, what we want in terms of monetary value is not that much, really, by, by their standards, and it's pretty cheap to appeal. So sure, they'll appeal. We just got a decision from the... Um, the federal judge here that said they can't appeal. So if you, if you think about the way, the way the case was done is the whole group brought one lawsuit, everybody together, everyone on the caption, and we just tried one slice of the pie. And that was something that DuPont wanted, right? Because they wanted to take a bite and see if they win or not, and then go and appeal. And what happened is they lost, they don't like the taste, they now want to appeal. But the judge did rule in our favor on that and say you can't appeal. We're going to figure out the rest of the pie. We're going to we're going to first take care of all those other all those other homes in Waimea, and at that point, uh, then you can take your appeal. So that's a process that is uh, ongoing, and who knows how it works out? And the case may settle, or it might go up on appeal. There might be more trials. We're, we're trying to figure that out right now. So. Yes, ma'am. So you need to, that's an, yeah, so the, the question was, what's the objective of the lawsuit? Would it surprise you if I told you that when I bring a lawsuit that involves uh, almost 150 homes and almost 200 people on the caption, and they represent maybe six, 700 people all together, that they all have different objectives, that they have different opinions about what they want? I would say a substantial majority of my clients want them just to go now because they've suffered through this for more than a decade, and they don't see it. Even, even those who don't have a problem with GMO, because believe it or not, in, in, within my community of the people I represent, some people are very hostile to GMO just because of GMO, and some people on the other end of the spectrum say, well, you know, we're not really sure about this, right? We're not sure, we're not sure exactly, but yeah, we're not sure if it's safe, we're not sure if it's dangerous, brings jobs, right? So th that's, 
And you can have that dialogue, and we've had that dialogue in the case. I tell you this much, any single person in this room that wants to go down to Waimea, you contact me and I'll put you in contact with someone there. And we'll take a walk in that community and then see what you think about GMOs. Because who cares if it's safe on your plate, given what they're doing in Hawaii? That's the reality in, in my mind. Reasonable minds can disagree whether it's safe to eat, but the, but the disdain that these companies have had for Hawaii, and Waimea in particular, because that's what I'm most familiar with, absolutely not. I've got no respect for these companies. Absolutely zero for the way that they've treated, treated the land, what they've done in that community, what they've done in other communities, not just Waimea. So, anybody else, other questions? Oh, I'm sorry. question is actually, um, Mr. Nugent, or Mr. Sure. Gary, but for a policy maker, and I applaud you, Gary, you know, for standing up for your people in Kauai, but my question is, should we, we should have tougher laws against you know, people, policy makers, as well as um, companies or lobbyists, you know, that, that they come together and they make this possible. We need to have stricter laws so that they know, without a doubt, if they're going to mess with the people, then they're going to, be, they're going to, be, they're going to pay. They're going to pay. So, for policy makers and as well, we need, we need really strict laws so that they know before they come and make business in Hawaii that they got this to, to deal with because obviously they don't care. But if they have strict laws that say, okay, you know, if you guys come and do business and you're doing heaven, then you're going to pay. So, that's, that's my one now. I'll go ahead and respond, uh, but let's thank Kyle for, for all of this. Thank you. Thank you.